Asian restaurants make up a way higher percentage in America given the Asian population. So I guess the question is in the future, Will just every restaurant be kind of Asian? Yeah, this study just came out. It says 12% of all restaurants in America are of Asian cuisine, Andrew. Asians only make up 6.6% of uh, people in America. So that means that we're heavily represented from a cuisine perspective, but probably also working in that industry. Yeah, guys, we have some startling numbers we're gonna share with you. Certain Asian groups are super, super overrepresented in the restaurant owning field. And then there's also ones that are underrepresented. We're gonna talk about that. We're gonna break down each each of the main Asian cuisines too and where we see it going in the future. So please hit that like button, check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys as we are bringing you the stats today. Yeah, I mean, Asians are overrepresented in restaurants, Andrew, but we know there are still some fields that Asians are underrepresented what in. Whether that's they? media, music, entertainment, sports, company leadership, politics, the fine arts, creative fields, anything related to coolness in American youth culture, right? We're probably under 7% in those fields. I'm not saying we're not making headway though. We're increasing. But Andrew, in medicine, Asians make up 21% of all medical professionals. That's Shout a 3X. Shout out. Silicon Valley, Andrew. 57% of all Silicon Valley workers are Asian. That's an 8X overrepresentation. So are we nerds or what? Se uh, nail salons, hair shops, massage, esthetician. That's personal care, Andrew. 11% of the American industry. That's a 1.6X. And of Crystal course, Dale. Uh, food, 12% of all restaurants. Almost a 2X. Guys, listen. Asians and Latinos both alike have amazing food and it's actually very diverse. Latino is not just Mexican food, by the way, even though Mexican food is amazing. But I'm just saying, guys, these are two groups of people who have great cuisine that everybody likes and they like to work. So of course there's gonna to be tons of restaurants. And it sort of them. begs the question, Andrew, if LA and New York are already like 30 to 40% uh, combined between Latino restaurants and Asian restaurants, if the Latino population increases and the Asian population increases in America, Will every restaurant in America just be Asian or Latino? All right, let's bust out some stats real quick, guys. 71% of all Asian restaurants in the U.S. serve either Chinese or Japanese or Thai food, okay? So Chinese food is the most prevalent, obviously with the most amount of restaurants, to no surprise, 39%. But coming in a close second, 28% by Japanese. And let me tell you this, guys, Japanese people only make up 7% of the American pop, of the Asian population of America. Right, so that means a lot of people own Japanese restaurants, Andrew, that might not be Japanese. Yeah, and exactly. I, I've actually been to a couple Burmese or Thai-owned like sushi spots in like San Antonio, Texas. A, a couple other notable ones. Thai restaurants make up 11% of the Asian restaurants. You might be like, oh, that's not that many. Yeah, I guess there's not that many Thai people. But actually, Thai people only make up 1% of the Asian population. Well, that means that Thai food is 10x represented. Obviously, some of the owners of Thai restaurants might be Lao people as well. So we're going to get into every cuisine, break it down real quick, give you some stats, and where uh, talk about where we see it going in the future. But today's sponsor, Andrew, is our brand new chili oil, Smala. Yes, this is our actual own chili oil we've been working on for over a year, guys. If you guys want to hear more, follow Smala Sauce and also fill out this Google form at this link down below so that you guys can sign up and get updates uh, because it is about to drop very soon towards the end of June. So I'm very excited about it. It's get very good. Smala and put it on everything. It's really good. Like I said, man, there's nothing like it on the market. Anyway, back to the video, Andrew. Chinese people come in at 24% of the Asian American population, but they make up 39% of the restaurants. That's a 1.625X. So uh, yeah, this makes sense because I guess Chinese food, you can make it very cheap, which means you can open up a lot of them and you can kind of open up a restaurant with just one walk if you want. I mean, it's not surprising because everybody uh, you can almost ever have talked to in your entire life that lives nearby a city has their favorite own Chinese restaurant. Now it might be serving orange chicken, it might be just serving beef and broccoli, but they have their favorites. You know what I'm saying? So of course, obviously there's a whole bunch of Chinatown. So each Chinatown has anywhere from probably 20 to 100, 200 restaurants in them. So I guess I'm not surprised. And I do think Chinese food is going to continue and stay relevant because obviously uh, there's always Chinese people making it and people still always like the traditional ones. But yeah, what do you think are the future of, you know, the subgenres? Because there's so many subgenres of like American Chinese food. Is that going to continue? Or are people going to give that up and move towards authentic styles now, and provincial I, I'm, styles? I'm pretty sure orange chicken, David, and the pork fried rice is going to be around for a while. But also this might include, you know, like Taiwanese food also could count 
count as Chinese food in the umbrella of Singaporean the food, yeah. Chinese Malaysian food, yeah, who knows, not, Hong Kong food. I'm not sure where Singaporean food is getting placed in this case. If it is getting placed under the umbrella of Chinese food, then for sure, absolutely, Chinese is going to be by far the largest. I can see right now that Chinese food just doesn't want to be as cheap as it used to be, though. You used to be able to get full of Chinese food for like five, six, seven, eight dollars mm -hmm. in whatever town you grew up in. I definitely think the newer generation doesn't want to cook it for $5. I mean, think about it, guys. Every single town or city you have ever been to probably has a Chinese restaurant. They might be serving peanut butter dumplings or something that's super localized and tuned. Bourbon chicken out in Louisiana. They could be serving all... Guys, if you go to the South and you go to these random Chinese <laughs> restaurants, you'll see some funky stuff on the menu. I remember when I had first had strawberry or watermelon beef. Yeah. And that was not like a from a China recipe. That was from like the Americans. So kind of good though. Kind of good. It was good. It was good. Moving on to Japanese, Andrew, they make up 7% of the Asian American population, but 28% of restaurants. Obviously, Andrew, People like the high margins. Yeah, honestly, a lot of people who are not Japanese open up Japanese restaurants. Obviously, a lot of Thai people do, even Fujianese, Taiwanese people. Korean over, people. Koreans open up a lot of teriyaki spots, which I think fall underneath the umbrella of Japanese restaurants. I guess the biggest question is, if everybody's cooking Japanese food in middle America, right? I think in the main cities, people sort of demand like a Japanese chef or a Japanese like face on it. But like, if... If other people are representing Japanese food to middle America, can they maintain the branding? You know what I mean? To stay on point? Because, you know, Japan is so known for being, like, the clean and the service and everything. It's all relative, man. If it's the cleanest and fanciest and most Japanese restaurant compared to every other restaurant in town... Then it's Japanese, man. Yo, they yeah. usually got some neon panels looking like uh, uh, that, those movies from the early 90s with, like, yeah, Wesley Yeah, but, Snipes you know, but at the end of the day, stuff like omakases are such, like, in a way, I guess you would say the pinnacle of Asian cuisine. You know how they're so expensive. It's like $300 a person. Yeah, the, uh, the experience is so amazing. And you're getting these little tiny pieces of sushi, like nigiri and like sashimi. And um, yeah, I think people are going to keep opening up Japanese restaurants. I think people love Japanese food. Yeah. I think they love it. It's, it's not too flavorful, not too spicy, clean, romantic. Girls love it. <laughs> The d dates, date, perfect for dates. Oh, my goodness. Moving on to Thai food, Andrew. Um, This is just gigantic, bro. 10x representation. 1% of Asians are Thai. 11% of restaurants are Thai. And you know what I, uh, is interesting about Thai food, David, that I noticed? I noticed a lot of Indian people eat at Thai restaurants, even more than other Asian cuisines that I've noticed. For sure. And yeah. I don't see that many Indian people at Japanese spots because I don't think, I don't know, I don't think Indians eat raw fish that much. I don't think it's in their culture. Of yeah, course, yeah, yeah. Indian people, they come to tune it. But yeah, from India, I don't, I don't know if they're eating raw no, fish. No, but right. you're right. Thai itself, Andrew, uh, Thailand is one of the most unique Asian countries because traditionally it has always been part of the Indiosphere, but it has also actually been part of the Sinosphere. So yes, it has curry, but it also has a lot of fried rice and noodle dishes. You can eat it with a chopstick. You can eat it with your hands. You can yeah. eat it with a fork, a spoon. I mean, I think Thai food, bro, and I'm looking at... These videos on Instagram from Bangkok Foodie. He's about the fried egg. Dude, from Bangkok Foodie. And I'm just constantly seeing new Thai dishes that I've never seen before. Almost every other day, I see a new street food that I'm like, yo, what is that? I went to Thailand. I didn't have anything close to that. And so I think Thai food has a long way to go, bro. First of all, Pad Thai, Pad Siu, that's almost like your fried rice, your chow mein, chow mein, right? But it's like... I said chow mein because that's like how the Americans like to say it. <laughs> but like, um, uh, yeah, your low mean, like the, the basics are always going to be around, man. Yeah. I mean, I think for the interesting future of Thai food will be, will it just sort of stay the Bangkok style, like Pad Siu, Pad Thai, Pad Ki Mao, you know, Tom Yum and things like that? Or do you think it's going to move into the regional styles? Like, you know, how like South Thailand tastes, you know, a certain way. And then North Thailand, it tastes a little yeah. Burmese, Isan. Yeah, here, like here's a hot take, guys. I actually think the dishes that are essentially more cooked, because I here's the thing. Papaya salad. I had some really good papaya salads, but it can get really funky. And I just think that it, that funk is always going to push certain people away. But any cooked dishes from Thai food is going to always hit, man. Whether it's from the Isan region, it's going to be from Chiang Mai, it's going to be from Bangkok, Southern Thailand. It's going to hit. Dude, you can't say enough about Thai food right now. If you're thinking about opening up a restaurant right now and you just want to make money and that you can cook the food the right way, open up a Thai restaurant. Yeah. I'm um, moving on to Indian, Andrew. Um, 
Indians make up 21% of all Asians. However, just 7% of all restaurants. That is a 0.3x, basically uh, less than the population. Yes, Indians are repre- underrepresented in the restaurant sphere. But, by the way, this is global, guys. You might be thinking, ah, oh, I don't know, on my block, there's like five Indian spots because I live in like SF or Seattle. Right, no, this is, yeah, national. This is all parts of America. You have to understand, um, I would say in the boonies of America, you might find a Chinese restaurant. You might find a spot serving Japanese food. We got food. Wyoming Chinese food. It's yeah. a special Wyoming style. Uh, yeah, but you pro- you might not find an Indian restaurant because also, you know, Chinatowns have Asian cuisine in them, but usually the Asian cuisines are from the Sinosphere, which are like Vietnamese, Chinese, some Thai, some Malaysian, Singaporean, stuff like that. Do you think it's because people in, in middle America can't take the spices of Indian food? Or do you think it's also probably because not very many Indian people want to move to North Dakota or Idaho or et cetera, et cetera? Yeah, yeah. Also, I think most of the Indian restaurants, so a lot of them I, we grew up with. Uh, well, you know what? There are Indian-owned restaurants, but they're not necessarily serving Indian food, so I don't think they fall under this statistic. Like a, a pizza spot that's owned by Indians. I know right. quite You're talking about back in Seattle, there's a ton of Punjabi yeah. pizzas. Also, a lot of Indians, let's be honest, they also own a lot of Subways, and Subways will not count as Indian food. Yeah. Although made by a South Asian person. Right, right, right. I mean, we, they might own hotels in North Dakota exactly. or Montana, but they're not. Oh, I'm the mean, yeah, the Motel Sixes. Right, but unless at the bottom of the restaurant, they don't they don't have like the Taj Mahal uh, Palace restaurant. Um, people really love garlic naan and butter chicken, though. Do you think that people will kind of like move beyond that, or do you think that that's kind of like you know I, I put that at the beginner level, and, and I don't know if all Americans have stepped into intermediate, let alone advanced, right? Yeah, I think uh, yeah, I think garlic naan even has a ways to go to evolve and more do fusion. Like there's this one called uh, Ta- Tacos Mahal in New York that serves tacos on on naan. Um, moving on to Vietnamese food, Andrew. Um, Vietnamese make up 10% of the Asian American population, but 7% of the restaurants. That is a 0.7x. Were you surprised by this? Uh, yeah, so Viets are a little bit underrepresented, but I guess it doesn't fully surprise me because you're right. Vietnamese, again, are not necessarily the type of people to go into the boonies and open up a pho restaurant where there are no other Vietnamese people. Pho is very, very much for Asians. So you'll find them in Chinatowns. Obviously, there's a lot of Chinese, Vietnamese. And oh, Vietnamese. a lot of all types of Asians love pho. Exactly. But, but but you're right. In Montana, I don't know if they got that much of a hankering for that dishwater soup. Yeah, but they're going to like some orange chicken or some cashew chicken for sure. For sure, because I would say that cashew chicken or orange chicken or, or General Tso's, it's like a fried, it's like fried chicken. Yeah, you know, I love banh mi's a lot, and so I'd like to see banh mi's, like, reach a different level in America and even get more mainstream, you know what I mean? I think they deserve it. Obviously, it's French influence. It is a sandwich. Makes a lot of all sense. All right, in middle America, I'm going to more bet on uh, banh mi's than even pho. But, right? Would you agree yeah. for a certain demographic in America? I'm not talking about the coastlines and all these people who's all cultured and stuff. You know what I have noticed? At a lot of new sandwich spots that are not Asian, they will have a banh mi flavored sandwich. Right, with some pickled daikons yeah. and some pickled carrots. Yeah, with like some that. daikons, carrots, and a little bit of hoisin, and it will kind of taste like a banh mi or a pho. Yeah, I see that with kimchi aioli as well, especially in uh, Asheville, North Carolina. Yeah. Um, shout out to Korean food. Coming up next, Andrew, Koreans make up 9% of all Asians in America, 6% of restaurants. That's a 0.6. Yes, a little bit underrepresented, but I also think the Koreans own a lot of restaurants that do not serve Korean food. Mm. A lot of Koreans own diners. You know what I mean? The oh, Americana type earn stuff, cafes, right? Cafes. They serve coffee. So they're not. Oh, they, these will not fall under the Korean umbrella. Chinese love cooking Chinese food. I will tell you this: Chinese do not run that many restaurants that do not serve Chinese food. But Koreans, Vietnamese, and other people will. You know? Do what you mean? think it's also because Koreans do not have a fast food style like? There's no such thing as like the Panda Express of Korean food that yeah. is easily accessible for a, um, you know, like a blue collar person or somebody who's, who they don't, they're not exposed to gochujang and, and, and fermented flavors. Yeah, they might yeah. not be I open mean, to that. Things like, I guess, teriyaki restaurants can appeal to other people, but like, uh, a, like a, a flame broiler, I don't even, or a waba grill, I don't know if that falls underneath 
Korean food umbrella. You, you know, know what I, mean? I see a lot of people try, and even uh, and I think they would like it in Middle America, but I don't know if any Koreans want to move to Middle America to open these spots up. Is Korean fried chicken? Yeah, I totally could see them choosing that over something traditional and hundreds of years old like a sundubu do you, tofu soup. Do you think there's anything? holding Korean food back from being even larger because everybody loves that. Everybody that's had K BBQ loves K BBQ, yeah. but apparently obviously opening up a K BBQ restaurant is very costly uh -huh. and it's expensive. And then often it's a high ticket item. You got to drop at least like 30 bucks. Right. For uh, and, and you know, it's a great thing to have in America because America has amazingly high quality beef. That's like quite affordable. I'd say this. I see a lot of Asians really love Korean food. But outside folks, like, you know, that are, like we said, you know, older from a different era in America, I think a lot of them might, may never even have had it. Right, right. Even some of the gochujang or the kimchi flavor is just not, yeah, it's hard for them. It's a, they're yeah, but, I, yeah. but Asians, man, Asians really like it because I Asian. think we're, we're, we're accustomed to the flavor profile. Moving on to Filipino, Andrew. 20% of Asian Americans are Filipino, certainly helping out on that healthcare statistic, right, with the nurses. But only 1% of Asian American restaurants are Filipino. That's a 0.05x. Yeah. That means 120th representation. Yes, yes, yes. I think that this is the largest drop-off. Now, again, I do think Filipinos are working and have other jobs, as we know. Like, if you look at how many, uh, how, the percentage that Filipinos make up in nursing or the medical field, I guarantee you they're way overrepresented than any other group. Right, right. right. Um, but yeah, I think Filipino food, we made a whole video about why Filipino food is maybe not as popular as it could be. Uh, I'll leave a link down below. But um, I, th I think the main thing is that they haven't done an express concept chain yet. Yeah, yeah, and I and I do think the there's about six or seven items that super right off the top of my head can go super commercial, but um, yeah, there's lumpia, only about six lumpia, lumpia, adobo, chicken adobo. But then how, how do you make like a chicken adobo sandwich, or how do you make it like mm. in a fast food sense, like you said, like a like a rice bowl spot, right, right, right. like a fried chicken style? Yeah, I will say this: I think a lot of like Asian fusion bowl spots. Now I don't know where the Asian fusion bowl spots fall what umbrella and what category they'll fall under. Right. They, they might just get categorized under not, not because they'll have a flavor from every single city. They got the Tokyo Bowl, yeah, the Manila Bowl, the Seoul Bowl, exactly, the Shanghai Bowl. Exactly. But uh, to your point, Andrew, the last thing we had on the list was Cambodians. And the thing is, of course, there are Cambodian restaurants, but most Cambodians are known for owning donut shops. Obviously, that's it's not going to fall underneath like Cambodian cuisine representation, even though the ownership is Cambodian. Right, right, right. So, uh, yeah, these are pretty much the main Asian groups that have restaurants in America. Of course, there's Indonesian, um, but I don't think that that makes up a huge amount. But I also... Not sure if it falls under a different category, but maybe it's probably its right. own. What if it's from Borneo, Kalimantan, and they're Chinese Indo? I don't know. Is that Well, is well, it? actually, yeah. So the largest six... Yeah, so 19% of Asian restaurants are actually other Asian unspecified. Okay, so that could be Indonesian. Obviously, you have Mongolian, Burmese, Pakistani, Filipino, Korean right here, as um, you can see from the graph. Let's get into our takeaways, Andrew. Asians make up 6.6 .6 of the current American population. 12% of restaurants, that's almost a 2x, right? So that means if Asians get to 15% of the American population, will it continue to be 2x and 30% of all restaurants in America will be Asian? I think... I actually, this is a hot take, bro. I think 25% of restaurants in America will have some type of Asian influence. Okay, what does that mean, though? No, like a dish that has a clearly Asian item. Are like, we talking even, about like a Mandarin salad? That's, yeah, a, that's I old. even think just like burger spots, anything that is a little bit more free, like if it's not strictly like a French burger spot. You know what I mean? Like if it's like an American, American food will... And essentially now I did nowadays you can say has Asian cuisine as part of it. Well, I would say, for example, a lot of coffee coffee shops have a matcha on the menu, and some of the newer school ones have started to have a Vietnamese a uh, cafe du monde like type I said, style. Like, like one. Dog House is a chain that serves a lot of do hot dogs and burgers, and they have like Asian flair to right, it. Right, you can get a teriyaki one, you can get a kimchi one, yeah, you can yeah, get yeah. a Thai one. Exactly. So I on think it. Asian influence is going to be everywhere, just like I think Latino influence is everywhere. Everybody has like a a a. Uh, you know, a carne asada something or like a, a pollo something. I mean, you like, see it a lot, especially reflected on like, for example, just the Jack in the Box menu. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. Because Jack in the Box is one of the only chains based out of California. Um, Andrew, why do you think Asians love running restaurants so much? Because a lot of Asians, they 
they'll just be there seven days a week, man. Like, if they have to, to hold it down, I mean, um, they'll do it. I think because they've seen a lot of Asians be successful at it, I think that it is in our culture. We have a rich food culture, you know, with all the, the different— The chefs are respected. Yeah, chefs are fairly respected. And, uh, yeah, it's something that immigrants can do. So I guess you just keep wanting Asian immigrants <laughs> to come over so they can cook, like, really good— affordable food yeah i'd be interested to see where all these cuisines go guys let us know what you think in the comment section below of the asian overrepresentation in restaurants f and b um asians being underrepresented in other fields and specifically andrew which asians were over and underrepresented you got to support real small businesses businesses of all sizes i like it i might need to move after this this was a video about why every restaurant in the future will be kind of asian until next time, everybody, we out. Peace. Peace.